Right, so the latest in the disc brake saga on this bike is that I'm still struggling with warped discs. These are Galfa uh, 160 on the front now and a 140 on the back. But don't ever put a 160 on the back, you just don't ever need it unless you're super heavy. Um, so, and what's funny is, is that these uh, lock rings have an external type teeth arrangement, so you need a really big tool to get those off. Whereas the more standard type is this one, which uses the Shimano cassette tool to take on and off. So I'm gonna go with these ones, I think. I just bought this one KCNC blue one to try it out, and it's nice and light, it works well. I much prefer the using the Shimano cassette tool than, than that big horrible tool at the back. Uh, I went from, I was using a 140 on the front because it was the only one I had that wasn't really warped and wasn't giving me uh, brake rub, but it's just not powerful enough. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm only 65 kilos, but I do like to brake hard and it, it wasn't powerful enough. There's not enough uh, leverage there. So I've got the 160 back on and I'll just have to suffer the slight warping that's, that this disc has. I've strained it a little bit myself, so it, it's better. Um, and as you probably know, getting 160 center lock discs is nigh on impossible at the moment. So when I stumbled across this one on eBay, I thought, okay, great, we'll give that a whirl. It's a, it's a ceramic disc. Uh, well, it's kind of aluminium with a ceramic coating. And the price was kind of okay. I mean, it's expensive, but everything is at the moment. And um, yeah, it's all in Italian and it's ultra light, 84 grams with electrochemically applied uh, ceramic coating on the, on the braking surface. My Italian's not great, but I think that's pretty much what it says. Uh, so that was all exciting. And um, you know, ceramic makes sense. If you remember the people like Mavic putting ceramic coatings on rim brakes back in the days, they, they, were, they were fantastic, a lot of uh, a very high coefficient of friction, um, you know, instant, very powerful braking. So, you know, why not, why not put them on a, on a disc brake, on a disc brake rotor? It's a good idea, potentially, I'd like to try it. Um, but unfortunately, these guys actually canceled my order almost immediately, so they don't really have any. It was, uh, it was just to kind of, I don't know, just to get me excited. So uh, then I've managed to find this. Uh, good old Hope, I used to have these on, on my mountain bike um, in the old days. So, I'll, you know, good stuff, British manufacturer. Um, very hard to find these. I don't know why they can't just churn them out because there's nothing too complicated about making these. Uh, this is a 160 center lock. It's gonna be a bit heavier than the Galfers because it's a fully, you know, floating design um, with the two part uh, steel and aluminium, steel, steel rotor and aluminium carrier. Um, but hopefully it will be straight and it will stay straight, which is important. I'm prepared to give up a few grams for that. So I'm going to weigh this when I get home, uh, see how it compares to the Galfa and then check it out on the road and see how well it breaks. Right, time for the weigh-in. This is the Hope 160 center lock disc. And that is 121 grams. A little bit over advertised. I think it was 116. And obviously not the lightest in the world, but only a little bit more heavy than a Durace. Very slightly, I think. Uh, this is the Galfer I was using. The same 160 center lock. Um, 96, so yeah. I mean, this is about as light as you can get at the moment for a 160 center lock disc, um, more or less. Uh, but it, it does tend to warp. I mean, I've had lots of problems with these warping. So, you know, that's that's not good for me. It's got to break smoothly and powerfully without any, any grief really. So what's interesting, um, this is the Durace pads with the heat fins that are attached. That's 15 grams. And these ones here are some aftermarket uh, VAR organic and much simpler without the heatsink. Uh, now they are 16 grams, but I should point out that these Shimano's are almost completely worn out, as you can see. 
they wear out frighteningly fast. Um, so if when you think about all the meat on those, uh, once they're worn, they'll be more like 10 grams, I would think. So a small saving. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna try them. I don't know if there's less heat dissipation with these. There's gonna be, obviously be a little bit, but um, I'm not in the Alps, I'm in Mallorca. So should be all right. Let's see, get the bike out tomorrow and uh, see how she breaks with this on it. So it's a beautiful day. It'll be 25, 26 degrees. Climbing into Valdemosa. You can see it there. Beautiful little town. Uh, there's the lads. <laughs> and I've got the wrong handle. There's the disc, which rubbing a little bit. The new pads, slightly thicker disc as well. But after a few hard stops, it's kind of okay now. So yet to test it in a, in a tough descent but uh, that's coming up. So let's see, feels good so far. So first descent done, pretty good. Lots of feel at the lever, strong braking, no fade. That's what we like, that's worth 25 grams all day long. coming. Someone overtake me. Overtake me. Go, go. Pull a wheelie. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. There's, there's a wheelie. I am gonna learn to wheel it like that one day. Uh, One-handed, yeah, I'm not sure I'm ever gonna, at 50 years old, I'm not gonna have time to do that, I don't think, <laughs> but you never know, you never know. <laughs> yeah, all right, not bad, you can stop now. So this is the tunnel at the top of Pushmayor. Just done the 14K climb. It's about six, 7% average. It's quite a tough one. Uh oh, noisy bikes. Uh, quad, no, bike. And uh, just me and the Flying Dutchman. So now we get to test the brake again, coming downhill. about an amazing view and having having a wee it's great <laughs> room with a view okay so sorry one last thing I forgot 
and then I promise I'll leave you in peace to enjoy your weekend. Shimano, Durace, and I think the Ortega is quite similar, disc rotors, have this huge fan-like structure going on. And to me, it seems a real shame that you're basically, you've got a fan thing that's creating a lot of drag as it, as it spins, which is only gonna be useful for about 0.1% of the time that you're riding, i.e. when you're descending and braking hard down quite a steep coal. All the rest of the time, it's completely pointless. So you have a disc which is, in effect, slowing you down. It's really not aero at all. It's, it's designed to catch the wind, to, to ventilate the disc and cool it, but that's at the sort of very high end critical temperatures where you could have warping or some sort of failure um, and yeah, I guess the, the Samana engineers have looked at the most extreme situation and said it's going to get very hot at the, in these situations, so we need some sort of cooling thing, and here we go. But, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know, it just seems a shame because you're just not using that the vast majority of the time. And it strikes me that there should be a better solution than that. And maybe we'll see it in the new Jura that's coming out. Uh, watch this space. I'll have my name down for a group set, which should be arriving soon.